to that song. I feel like this data song I'm just recording. I need a data session. There we go. Yeah, I definitely need some like definitely some movement. Um, yes. Welcome everyone. We're going to get started just in a few minutes. Um, uh, that was a, a world premiere of the data data song, um, at least as it relates to the advanced mentality user group. Um, we are uh, excited to have our presenters are just going to uh, wait just a couple of minutes to let people come in. Um, and in the meantime, um, as is the tradition, we love uh, people to welcome um uh to to share who they are where they work and let's talk food favorite winter meal um it's it's getting a little cold in chicago so i think it's uh i'll kick us off i think uh some sort of soup um let's say potato leek soup is that that's kind of you know i don't know uh so yeah say where you're from and uh thank you all for coming we're gonna get started probably in about uh two minutes Oh, maybe I can just continue the song in the meantime. Over grass all day and night, I'm a data geek. It's my delay. I'm a data scientist, oh, and I love to analyze. There we go. But I invest in data government. Ramen, yes, yes. <laughs> Where have I? What? What with the potato leek soup nonsense? Ramen, fuck, fuck. Yes, yes, and town. Taught me how to say it slightly better than I was saying it before. You say it like a question. I know I'm still butchering it. Yes. Yes. Welcome, folks. I think we have, yeah, soups. It's all about the soups, I guess. Curry soup, red lentil curry soup. Wow, that sounds exotic. Uh, Ola's chili. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like traditional or turkey or like there's like so many different there's like white turkey maybe that's that's too much I don't know I had the white chili it was it was good but sometimes you just want the traditional welcome chicken chili yes hello chocolate chips that's a, that's an all season pet chocolate chip cookies I mean absolutely I um. I just feel like you just throw a cookie skillet and some ice cream. I don't know. That's a winner. It's a winner. Welcome, everyone. Hi, right, Trevor. Good. Good, good, good. I think, I think we are, I think we're ready to get started. Uh, I'm glad uh, folks are joining us today. Um, welcome. We have a, uh, an exciting presentation today. Um, from the folks at the University of Nebraska Foundation. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they have cooked up. I also want to welcome Tam to the Tableau User Group Leadership Team. Uh, she is um, a wonderful addition. Um, and I'll let Tam say hello in the chat or if she wants to come up on mute either way is totally great. Um, and we are um, also appreciative of all the work that Elisa did, um, has done, and she is rolling off. So it's so excited to have Tam here. Um, we are going to do a Tableau raffle. So uh, we have a, a question all prepared, and there's a chance to win $100. So to the uh, user group, um, sorry, the, uh, uh, the Tableau store um, where you can spend your $100 um, on lots of cool products. Um, hi, I'm Jesse Rader. I am part of the leadership team for this tug, um, but I'm also excited to introduce my team who has graciously volunteered slash voluntold to do a presentation today. Um, so as uh, Ron transitions um, his screen share to Karen, um, I just ask that um, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A function at the bottom and we'll get to those um, as we can. I'll try to answer them along the way. Otherwise, we'll answer them at the end of the session. So take it away, Karen. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us um, for our cooking show from scratch. We're going to show you how to cook up a new business process and all the dashboards that might accompany it. Um, before we jump into what we will be cooking, we did want to introduce the chefs. 
So we have with us today, um, Kathy Rauscher. She's our executive chef or in the real world, our senior director of business intelligence. Um, our sous, sous chef is Saumya Venkata Subramanian. She's our data and reporting analyst. And then I'm Karen Hardy or our research and development chef and user experience analyst. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is showing you guys how to build a recipe or in this case a business process from scratch our steps for doing that is research and development bringing everything into the test kitchen and then finally cooking up a storm and then after you've presented a meal that you always have to tweak the recipe and make it just a little bit better um, and after i kind of walk through sort of the process of building this uh, process then i'm going to hand it over to my excellent teammates kathy and Salmia. And they are going to give us a little taste test of some of the great things that they learned how to do in Tableau to help us really bring this to life um, and make it something that everyone in our organization can see and be a part of. But before I jump into that steps, uh, it's probably important for me to tell you what are we cooking? So what is our main dish? In this case, we were building a process um, for organization wide development of our prospect pipeline. So we wanted a system-wide process to work with donors and event attendees to increase their engagement with the University of Nebraska Foundation. You might be asking yourself, did you not have a process for this before? Um, and we did, but I think um, if you looked at it, it was a little bit disorganized. A lot of it was based off of either one-off research and prospect assignment, or it was uh, based on data from old prospect well screenings. And each team at the organization, so like our plan giving team, major gift officers, um, more annual giving level development staff kind of had their own plan for how they were gonna tackle prospect leads. And with this new method, we've really made it systematic. Um, we have criteria to assign prospects to all of our different teams. And I think one of the biggest things is it's prospects from our current engagement with our organization. Um, and then again, it's organized at all levels from top to bottom. So the first step in this process is doing research and development. And for us, that was being invited to some key initial stakeholder meetings. We could do a whole nother presentation on how you build relationships with your teams in your organization to be invited to these meetings. But one really key piece of this for us is that we do have an existing good relationship with our prospect management and development teams. So they actually came to us and said, we are gonna build this new process for tracking uh, prospect leads. I think several of them are on the call here today. They had a, obviously an instrumentally huge part in this process as well. Um, but they invited us to those meetings and that was a key step in this. Um, and again, I don't wanna to get too much into that relationship building because that could take us the whole hour. But once we were invited to the meetings, there's kind of three things you really wanna focus on. Um, and the main one, and you'll hear me say this a lot, is what is the goal? So as you're defining a new business process, what is your hope here? And that sounds like a really easy and obvious question, but it's something that uh, we see get missed a lot which is you kind of start with this goal. And then as you have a bunch of conversations and evolve through this process, you can kind of lose sight of what that is. So for us, it was really this systematic engagement of warm prospect leads. And we had to keep that in mind from start to finish. And then the second piece of this is we need to create tracking methods that work both in practice. So things that our prospect uh, management team can actually make happen with the time that they have on their hands and things that also work for reporting. And so this is why it's so key to be invited to these meetings because otherwise sometimes what you might see happen and I'm sure we've all been a part of a situation like this before where somebody comes to you and they hand you a whole bunch of ingredients and say, make this dish. And you're like, well, you're missing some really key things. Um, if you saw in my introduction, I said, I really love chili and I think it absolutely has to have beans, but somebody might not bring the beans if you don't, um, you know, become part of this process from the beginning, and then you're not going to get really the outcome that you're desiring. So um, being part of those conversations is really important. I want to zoom in on this part of creating the actual process, though, so we can talk about some of the steps for that. And the first thing is it is going to involve a lot of discussion. We actually started doing this um, over a year ago in January of 2023, and I checked my calendar. We had four meetings alone in January just to discuss this process and what it was gonna look like and all the different things that we were gonna do. And that doesn't include the dozens of informal conversations I'm sure we had in the hallway or over a Teams chat or something like that. Um, so there will be a lot of discussion if you're building something totally from scratch. 
you also have to be willing to let the ideas evolve. Um, the idea we started with is not what we finished with. And if I remember correctly, we actually initially set this up to be um, a process just for one specific team. And as we had all these conversations, we realized, why don't we make this an organization wide process so that everybody is following the same standards and everybody has easy access to this prospect lead data. And then this one I'm going to mention a couple times as well is to really write it out. It's really easy in a meeting to go through a business process and say, hey, here's all the things we're going to do from A to Z. But it's kind of easy to gloss over how you're actually going to get there and who's going to complete the steps to make this happen. So it's key to write each step down and actually assign out who's going to be doing something. So in this case, we um, we kept saying, well, and then someone will assign all of these prospect leads. And through our research, we realized that could be several hundred prospects um, every single month. And somebody was going to have to go in and actually assign those. So we had to make sure it was someone who had bandwidth. And in the end, we even invited our um, IT team to come be part of this as well. And they're helping to sort of smooth that process out and automate parts of it so it doesn't take one person quite so long. And then finally, don't be afraid to ask for help. People in the advancement industry are really willing to share their knowledge, their expertise, their experiences. And we want to give a thank you to the University of Illinois and Katie Harrell and her team. Um, they had at least one meeting and several email conversations with us where they showed us some um, similar things that they were doing on their team. And it really served as an inspiration for our final product. Um, so we wouldn't have got to where we are today without them as well. So we're going to jump back to research and development. That's the step we've been in, just kind of zoomed in on that tracking methods. Um, the last step of these initial stakeholder meetings is really to be honest with everybody about what is possible. Um, sometimes people can have these really great, awesome ideas about reporting, but it won't work because we can't track a certain thing in our CRM or because Tableau doesn't work quite in that way or whatever it might be. But just really be honest up front about what you can and can't do or what you need to do additional exploration on. Um, because the worst thing and the thing that will kill your credibility with another team is to promise something and not be able to deliver it. And then in addition to um, stakeholder meetings, you're also going to have to have some internal team meetings to make sure your team is on the same page. Not everything can or should be hashed out in a large meeting with every stakeholder on a project. And sometimes you just need to step back as a team and say, OK, what can we do? What do we need to bring back to these stakeholder meetings and what questions do we still have? So in those check-ins with yourself and your team, um, again, I'm going to come back to writing it out. So something that really helped us through this process was to take each deliverable and kind of write down four things. So what did we hear them ask for? What did we plan to provide them? And how might that be different than what they initially asked for? And then we wrote down any remaining questions so we could be sure to answer those. Um, and then finally, always being honest about our timeline. So what's realistic for our team? There's always competing priorities. Um, some things take a long time to develop. And so again, just that honesty with the team to make sure everybody's on the same page and we know um, what the next steps are and where we can and will go with this project. So once we did research and development, and that can take a long time, if it's a small, quick process, that might just be, you know, one or two meetings. For us, it was over the course of several months. But once we felt we had a pretty good um, handle on what we wanted this process to look like from finding the prospect leads to assigning them to tracking them in our system, we could bring everything into our test kitchen. So this is where you're going to make sure the things that you've designed actually work. So you're going to test it out in your CRM. In our case, we needed to test out some things in Tableau. As Kathy and Selmy are going to show you, we learned a lot of new tricks in this process. So we had to make sure that some of those things would work as we anticipated. And then I encourage you just to test the whole process, not just a piece or two or the thing that you think might be the most challenging, because um, you can really find that there might be areas of like a pain point or something that doesn't quite work the way you want. Or like I mentioned earlier, um, we do have um, someone who was assigning all these prospects and we needed to find ways to make that process easier for them. And then once you're done in the test kitchen, you get to cook up a storm. You get to actually make this main awesome dish that you want to serve everybody. So here's where you're going to start building your dashboard. Uh, you might need to go back to research and development or the test kitchen a few times to tweak some things, learn something new. Um, and 
like we'll talk about here in a little bit, you also might need to learn some new techniques. So this can um, be a really simple process if you're building something you know exactly how to do, or you might have to really um, stretch your skills in the kitchen. And again, I'm just going to encourage you to keep that end goal in mind. So what action is this driving and what will the user learn? So if you're building a dashboard and you're not really sure how to answer that question, take a step back, ask it of yourself, ask it of your team, and also go back to the stakeholders if you're not really sure and, and make sure you really have a goal in mind for everything that you're putting on a dashboard. And then, of course, as anybody who's developed any sort of report knows, um, your first attempt is rarely going to be perfect. So even if you uh, have a carefully tested recipe and you're sure it's just going to be awesome, and it probably is, you might find ways to make it better and to really just perfect that recipe. Um, and while you're doing that, be willing to listen to your customer. But remember, you're the expert in reporting and they're the expert in their subject. So they have a lot to bring to the table because they, they know what they're doing. They know what this process is. They know in this case what we need to do with all of our prospect leads and with development staff who are working these prospect leads. But we know on our end what can work in Tableau and what works in our CRM. So it's kind of balancing those two things and making sure that you really kind of keep in mind sometimes when a customer will ask you, I want this report to look and do and feel exactly like this, that you might have to help them see what they really need to focus on is what they want to do with the data that they're seeing. And then you might be able to help them find a better and easier and more seamless way to make that happen. So trust yourself as the expert. So that's kind of the steps from walking through like having this idea of a main dish or a business process and, and bringing it to fruition and bringing it out into the world as something that everybody can see. Um, but what we want to do is actually show you what that looks like, show you what our outcomes were and what these really great dashboards we built are. Kathy and Somi are going to walk us through that next. Um, and what they will be doing is kind of showing us the first report, which is how do we take these constituents who have engaged with the foundation in some way and narrow them down into the best prospects to be worked by our um, development staff. And then Somi will take us into our second dashboard, which is showing once we've assigned these prospects, what happens with them. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to Kathy and let her take it away. Thanks, Karen. Um, as she mentioned, the business process and the reporting needs for a project evolve over time. So if you look at the image in the upper left-hand corner, that was um, a picture of the whiteboard from the initial brainstorming session or one of the initial brainstorming sessions with our central administration and prospect management teams. The upper right and the lower left were some design ideas that we had and some initial dashboards um, that we built to try to present that, num that those numbers, but found that those were a little bit too complex, too many numbers, too busy. So the lower right-hand image is actually where we took our inspiration for our initial prospect pipeline dashboard. You can go to the next one, Karen. Thank you. Um, so this is the final version of our prospect pipeline report. Basically what we're looking at here is we're demonstrating to leadership the number of gifts and event attendees that happen throughout a month. And then we're filtering out um, individuals and organizations based on gift capacity, age, disqualification metrics, things like that. And then we're filtering out again any already assigned households. And that leaves us with the number that is basically what we consider to be our monthly prospect pipeline for the organization. Now, this dashboard is extremely simple. Um, it's presented to our advancement leadership on a monthly basis. So we wanted the numbers to be very direct. We didn't want a lot of getting into the weeds on these kinds of things. This is just a high level overview um, for them. We do have some tool tips in the dashboard that do allow them to see some additional numbers in case um, there are additional questions. And the big thing for us was this was numbers. These are numbers that were not previously available to them in any easy available format. So um, that was a big win just in, us, in and of itself. And then we also, if you go to the next slide, we also created versions for each of our four main campuses so that the leadership of those campuses could see 
what part of that big number belonged to them. Um, we tried to build these funnels in Tableau. You can go to the next one, Karen. Um, but just didn't find that what was available in Tableau was as visually appealing or consistent as what we were hoping to see. Now, these two are very, very rough examples of what we tried to do in Tableau. Um, but as the numbers changed, the size of the funnel changed and we just couldn't get it to look as clean and crisp as we wanted it to. Um, so I had attended a session at the Tableau conference in 2023 put on by Kevin Wee. And he is, it was titled Creative Ways to Use Images in Tableau. And basically his um, session talked about using background images to simplify what you were doing in an actual Tableau workbook or dashboard. Um, his example was basically he had a he had a set of templates for like a web page type dashboard, and then he would just load his worksheets on top of it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is we need to get the back background image created. It needs to be a PNG file. Um, and you can find these on the internet. If you find one that works for your um, company or for your, your purpose, that's fine. We didn't find anything that we felt we could customize enough to make it look as we wanted it to. So we decided to create one of our own. I'm using PowerPoint to do that, but there are many different tools out there. So you can basically do the same thing um, in a lot of different tools, but this is what I had and what I was comfortable with. Um, so basically to build the funnel, we need to use trapezoid shapes in PowerPoint. And we're gonna flip that and resize it. Make it as big or small as you want it to. Adjust the angles so that it looks more like a funnel type shape. Can change the colors to fit um, what you need. And you just build as many of these layers as you need for your purpose. Um, adjusting the colors as you want. You can build in space between them. Um, borders, all kinds of things, whatever it is that meets your needs or you find visually appealing. I'm going to do this really quickly so it's not going to look the greatest. And I'm not much of an artist either, so... So once you have the funnel shape, colors, etc., backgrounds, all of that stuff that you want, what we're going to do is we're going to copy these trapezoid shapes. And we're going to go to another blank um, slide in, in PowerPoint, and we're going to paste it as a picture. This is important. Make sure you paste it as a picture because then we're going to actually save that picture out as a PNG file to then use as our background in our Tableau dashboard. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use this particular image. I've got one created already. So, um, so those are the key things, though. You need to make sure that you copy and paste it as a picture and then save it out as a picture so that it's available for you. Keep in mind, you can do logos, headers, footers, all kinds of stuff in your image. You can do basically whatever you want to do with your image. You just have to kind of decide how much of that you want to do in Tableau, how much of it you want to do on your background image. Um, in this case, it's something pretty simple we did, but we could have done it very differently and put our headers and footers and all of that actually in the image. Okay, so 
here is my dashboard that I have started. Um, the key thing here is that I'm going to make my funnel a background image and then you float your worksheets or text boxes or whatever it is you want on top of that background image. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to tiled and I'm going to bring an image into my dashboard. I'm going to choose the image that I saved previously. It's just a PNG file. I'm going to center it and fit it. So there you can see that I have my nice background image. Obviously, these aren't exactly laid out or, or um, organized or sorted or centered um, as you would for a final purpose. But so if I were to add something to this bottom square, I'm going to change it to floating. I'm going to drag my worksheet over. Turn off my titles, any of that basic formatting stuff that I want to do. Whoops, I got a little carried away there. And then I would bring in a text box to put the descriptions, et cetera, et cetera, on it. However, I wanted it to be. I can bring in, in our case, we do logos and confidentiality statements at the bottom. So I would bring those in um, as images as well. You can also turn on your dashboard header. Um, obviously, I would have to adjust my numbers a bit down here. But you can set a dashboard header just like um, on any dashboard and it would adjust your image down to allow for that. Now, the other option you have is to use your image as the background of a worksheet. So if we have an instance, as we do in our for campus dashboard, we can't just use a background image or we could use a background image if we built all four of those funnels into an image and brought that into the dashboard. But we didn't do it that way. We actually did it by building um, worksheets for each of those background images. So in order to do that on a worksheet instead of on a dashboard, you need to create two calculated fields, an X axis and a Y axis. And basically those two just have a value of one. Very simple, nothing to it. Um, I always get these backwards, so I'll probably get them backwards again. But sorry, my computer is not happy right now. Okay, so we're going to drop them onto our rows and columns. And we need to set them from a sum to an average. Okay. Now I've had some, I have some other images in this workbook. Um, and so Tableau automatically brought those images in here. I don't want those. So I'm just going to uncheck them and take them off. I will show you that you can also condition an image um, to control what shows up on a background. We use that for our logos and et cetera. Okay. So from here, we simply want to format we want to get rid of our, whoops, get rid of our grid lines, get rid of our axis rulers. We don't want this circle to show up, so we're going to set the opacity of that to zero to hide it. We're going to get rid of our axis headers because we don't need those. And then I'm going to go up to map background images and select my data source. And then I'm going to select the image that I want. Or I can bring in a new image depending on um, what situation you're in. I happen to have mine um, already here. Now, I did make my X and Y axis backwards. I always do. I don't know why. But they're both a value of one, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Setting the right to one and the top to one is basically telling Tableau where this image sits on the page. Um, Tableau basically interprets these as longitudes and latitudes. 
um, which doesn't necessarily apply to an image like this, but that's what they're doing. So it just gets it so that it sets it at the right point on the page. Um, you also have options to lock the aspect ratio um, and always show the entire image. And then here's where if you're doing something where you want to condition what image is showing, you can actually add um, filters and conditions here so that the image only shows up in certain instances. So I'm going to flip my image. So there's my background image on my worksheet. Very simple, pretty similar to what I did with the dashboard. Um, and here's what I can do. I can go over to a dashboard then, and I can actually insert, if I can find it, my sheet. Whoops, sorry, change it to tiled. And then I can insert my sheet as a background image and float my other worksheet statistics, text, whatever is over the top of that. Um, so it's pretty easy to do. Um, really nothing too complex to it, but it saves a lot of time trying from trying to really get a Tableau funnel like this to look exactly the way you want. This way you always know it's going to always look the same. Um, it's just the numbers on top of it that are going to change. So so this dashboard, as we said, identifies the potential prospects um, based on giving or event attendance, any of those kinds of things during the month. Um, once those prospects are identified, our prospect management team will go through, review those potential prospects and assign them as prospect leads to our different um, fundraising teams, major gift, plan gift, um, donor experience officers, assistant DOs, those kinds of things. And there's a cadence that they will work through on those prospect leads. So of course we want to be able to measure the success of those pipeline prospects through that cadence. Um, and so Somi is now gonna show you um, what our pipeline outcome report looks like and how she built that. Um, and so I'm gonna pass it over to her. Thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> so the second part of the pipeline initiative was to track all the assigned prospects to their outcomes. So our vision for the report was to use a Sankey chart so we can visualize the flows and compare the different outcomes by the teams that the prospects have been assigned to. So my first pass through the Sankey exercise, I built everything from scratch in Tableau you know, built in all the uh, data densification calculations. Um, things were great with our magical superstore data. When I tried to tailor the report to our outcome report and adding more levels, um, it was a tricky business. And, you know, with tons of calculations, it became tedious and uh, time consuming. So I started look looking into the possibility of using Tableau extensions or any templates out there that I could manipulate <clears throat> and then, you know, create a Sankey chart. So that's when I came across all the wonderful templates by Ken Florlidge. Here is the website. Ken Florlidge has a lot of website uh, Sankey templates. The Florlidge twins, I'm pretty sure everyone knows the Flourish Twins. They are well known in the Tableau community for all the amazing work and the resources they have available. So he has, Ken Florlidge has a lot of templates out there, traceable Sankey, vertical Sankey and so forth. So I have used one of the templates developed by Ken um, for the pipeline outcome report. and. It's a cool website, and he also explains what his template is based off of, you know, the work of Jeffrey Schaefer, who built the first visual for Sankey, and all the mathematical concepts behind how these calculations are built. So if anybody is curious, we'll be sharing the link. Um, 
but before I explain and go into the template. So this is the report that tracks all the assigned prospects. So as Kathy mentioned, as the prospects are, the, the funnel spits out all the pipeline prospects, they get assigned, they are reviewed and assigned. And as they're assigned to a team, the pipeline outcome report will pick them up. So they come in as assigned prospects and depending on whether they have a meeting or they are still in the process, they go on to the next step, which is had meetings and no meetings. And then at the end of the prospect cadence, they would flow into their respective outcomes. So this Sankey has two levels go and three steps. So prospects, the step number two is the one in the middle and the final is the outcome. So let me bring up the template. So this is the multi-level Sankey template that I downloaded from the Fleurlich Twins. So the template has two components. It has an Excel sheet and a Tableau workbook. So going to the data source, you will see that it connects to the Excel sheet here and I have it open. <clears throat> So the Excel sheet has two tabs. The model tab has all the necessary information for data densification that Tableau needs to build the visual. And then the data tab will bring in all your data. So just a few things about this. And again, he explains everything in the website, but I just thought I will walk you through the data tab because that will make sense when I bring in the pipeline data. So the link field is what we use to link our data to the model tab. And then ID is not needed. It's also a part of the traceable Sankey, but I will be bringing in the prospect ID so I can create my size. So here we have the Sankey goes from step one to step five. And for the purpose of the report that I showed you, we have only three steps, step one, is the assigned prospects, then they go on to the next step, which is whether you have a meeting or no meeting. And then step three is our final outcome. Um, the size field is something pre-computed in this example, and that will determine the size of the flow. And it is an important field. So that determines the size of the flow from one level to the next. So basically when I manipulate the template. I'm going to get rid of the data tab. I'm going to bring in the pipeline data using a custom SQL. And the custom SQL will include, so it's basically structure the data. So it includes all these data points, like step one, step two, all these data points that the template needs to build the visual. So that's a quick overview and let's go back. I don't need this data. So the custom SQL has everything built in and it has this dummy link field so I can join to the model. So that's the beauty. I know the Excel sheet had data, the data tab had, you know, pre-computed size. You don't need to aggregate anything. You can join with uh, detailed data and then create your calculations. on the fly here. Okay. Obviously, we are going to break these calculations. So coming back here, remember we have this size field. This size field is used to create the flows and Tableau is not finding the size field. So I'm going to create a new size 
that will make sense to the report. So for the purpose of this report, what I want to do is count the distinct prospects. So that will be from each level. We want to see how many distinct prospects flow from you know, being assigned to have a meeting. And then once they've had a meeting, how many distinct prospects go to each of their outcomes? So going back, I'm going to create this new size field, which will be Okay, the next one I'm going to fix is the step size. Again, this is just this is just the size of the Sankey arm as a percentage of the total. Okay. So you can do, just say, okay, look at the size field and replace all references. But when I did this, went through this uh, exercise, it helped me to go through each folder. And the template is amazing. You see, there are different bars. So Sankey is basically, you have two bars, a from bar and a to bar. And then you have all the polygons that flow from bar one to bar two. So what I did is basically go through each bar and you fix these red calculations. As you fix these, you can see how the template will update itself to reflect your data. So going in here, I always look at, I start with the size, that's your root calculation. So when you do that, all the other calculations will fix. Only show at least one bar so you know how I was able to work through this template. So this is basically a part of data densification that Tableau needs. And let's give it a minute. Okay. there. So we know there. So we've updated the first two bars. We know there are 1,550 assigned prospects that are coming in and you can see how many had meetings and no meetings. Um, now, as you go through, it's how I did is to fix all the bars because the curve that goes, curve one, two means these are the set of polygons that flow from bar one to bar two. So I go about fixing the calculations in each of the bars first and then come to this because this curve has a bunch of, this is all like nested calculations that are pointing to the calculations in bar one and bar two. So it is important that you fix everything in bar one and all the calculations in bar two before you go on to uh, fix the calculations in the curve. So in order to save some time, I've already done the, updated the calculations in the bar chart. So we have our first step, which are the assigned prospects meetings and no meetings and the outcome. I don't need anything beyond this. So I am gonna get rid of these. So I have more real estate here. Okay. 
Okay. So I have all these bars done. Now I'm going to switch over to the curve. Again, the problem is it's looking at the pre-computed. I don't need that. I'm going to replace it. There. So you always says it looks scary when you know you see so many calculations that are in red, but it's all logical if you go by size and folder by folder, the template will update. And now going back to curve two to three, which will take me from bar two to bar three. Again, it's the size field. I am going to overwrite it with my new calculation. So doing it folder by folder and fixing the calculation helped me understand how the template works. So I didn't want to just give Tableau the control and say replace references, but this actually helped me understand how the template works and what field it uses. So now we have the second level, which goes from meetings to their outcome. And from this, step it is about adding all the bells and whistles adding in all your tool tips and then changing colors of the outcomes um, and then making it more interactive for the user so for instance we add, you know adding in all the filters to make it more interactive we can look how the sankey changes when we pick a particular team there so you're able to now slice and dice the data, like assign prospects coming in. OK, for this team, how does the flow look like? And you can go and use any of these. I'm going to see, OK, let's look at those assigned to the ADO team, say, when were they assigned in October? How does the process look like? You know, And then there are additional functionalities where clicking on an outcome will take them to a detailed data tab that will list all the prospects with that outcome assigned to that team. And this, again, it's all about adding more, you know, making it more user friendly for them. So clicking on a record here will open that record up in Ali CRM. Um, that's another one. Um, what else do we have? So in addition to the visual, there is also a summary tab that we have that's just numbers, you know. Um, visuals are cool. Sometimes you need just the numbers uh, in hand. So the summary tab just gives a breakdown of the final numbers by outcomes and the teams, and it's all right there. So you don't have to, like, even hover every time you need a number, like you're hovering over this. Um, so that's how they work. The funnel will spit out the pipeline prospects. They are reviewed and assigned. Once assigned, they start flowing through the pipeline outcome, and they can slice and dice the, the data here by all these fields. And another cool thing about this template is right now there are only three, three stages and two levels. But should the report evolve and we want to add another level, then you just make sure you update your SQL so you include the data point, the next bar, step four. Once you bring step four through your custom SQL, the template already has bar four and then the curve uh, to, you know, available. So you will go into the bar four. Once you update your SQL, bring in your step four data, you will update the size here. And then once bar four is fixed, you will go and update the curve. And then it just, you know, it helps build on the levels in your um, Sankey. And that's such a cool feature. I know Ta uh, Tableau had released a beta version of the Sankey in Tableau Public for a brief time. So it's a matter of time before we have Sankey charts 
available in Tableau. And you can just build a Sankey chart by click of a button in like 30 seconds. Drag and drop your dimensions and measures, and boom, there's a Sankey. But we don't know when that is happening. So in the meantime, I think it's important we pause and recognize all the amazing work and the amazing resources we have for free, like these templates that makes building Sankey charts, which are so complex, a breeze. So I'm very grateful for all these resources out there. And with that, we come to the end of part two. I am going to pass it on to Karen for a wrap up before we open it up for questions. Karen. Yeah, thank you, Somia. So um, as you can see, getting from this process of okay, we want to start something new in our CRM, we want to keep good track of it, and we want to have a way to be able to see these outcomes and really understand exactly what's happening with um, all of our prospect lead data, really from finding out somebody might be a prospect to turning them into a assigned prospect lead with, with a desired outcome. Um, and that was a long process. It took a lot of different teams. So we kind of get to highlight um, our team's piece of this today for you, but we also just want to say thank you to our internal partners um, who've been a big part of this. And then again, the different resources, whether it be um, other advancement shops who shared information or the things that we can find online has been really helpful. Um, I did put these links in the chat. I'm going to show them here on the screen for anybody who might be um, watching on YouTube later. But if you have additional questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, the the different resources we used in this have been linked here as well. Um, and with that, we'd just like to open it up to any questions. I don't know, Jesse, if there was anything in the Q&A or something in the chat we might have missed. Um, I think Ron had a question, so we'll let him unmute and ask his question. Yeah. Uh, outstanding job. This was so cool. And uh, you made something very complicated, approachable. And I love your modesty mixed with talent. And it's perfectly on brand um, for your talented team. I just want to thank you. It's really, really a um, wonderful job. Um, my question was really around, are you aggregating some of the data in that SQL? Um, so, because um, that that fake join, I'm thinking about kind of the, how many rows are created. Are you doing some of the aggregation ahead of time, or are you limiting it based on like Are you trying to limit the number of rows in that SQL, or is it not an issue um, for you? It all? is no, it's not an issue. It's all detailed data, which includes everything that I need for the outcome. You know, for all the filters and everything, and I aggregate it when it's brought in. Sounds great. So the, the, the model and the template calculations takes care of it. Excellent. Very cool. Wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, we will have a video of this. Uh, no worries. And we're going to um, uh, we're going to go on to our raffle. Um, thank you all for that uh, fantastic presentation. Let me share my screen. And now we are going, yeah, here we go. Speaking of data rock stars. So we are going, um, some folks here are brand new to Tableau. Some people have been using it for years. Um, what we saw was uh, clearly very advanced, but they made it possible to follow step by step, which is always super cool. And also recognizing all the hard work that other folks have done. For this raffle question, I uh, please know if you want to DM me, um, do not put this in the chat. So DM, um, you can find my host name at the top and respond there just so you can, uh, so we can keep track of who's the first and also keep the responses, uh, private. Um, and so we are going back to the basics because Tableau is foundational. So my question for the raffle is please describe the purpose of a table calculation and provide two examples of when you would use it. All right, the first person to respond uh, will get a $100 gift card. There's some cool stuff in the, the shop. You can always Google, that's always an option. Um, and you can 
DM, or if you don't have a chance now, you can always connect on LinkedIn. I take whatever is first. Um, and in the meantime, um, I want to thank our presenters again. Um, this is a very exciting stuff. And, uh, and thank everyone for joining. Um, if anyone has any last thoughts, I see a couple people coming off mute. mute. Um, please do so now. So very quickly, uh, thank you, uh, Jesse team. Thank you, the uh, Nebraska Foundation. Um, if you have any similar, am I okay? Am I echoing here? I need to turn. Oh, we, we lost you, Mohammed. And you were good, no echo, no echo, you were good. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, now I'm not. What you say? <laughs> okay, is it better? Okay, yes, if, uh, if, uh, if you want to bring some of your expertise, doesn't matter what level of expertise, please, I am us, reach out to us in LinkedIn. I think the new system um, doesn't allow us to see your email anymore. We used to be able to email you and invite you. But right now, um, we have that mask. I think uh, Ron can speak to that more. He's the one who's dealing with that new system from Tableau. But if you have something and you want to share with the community, please reach out to us, Tam, Ron, Jesse, or myself, and then we'll we'll um, we'll help you bring your um, experience here. So just reach out to us on LinkedIn. Probably easier. Um, we also uh, have our emails out there, but LinkedIn probably the best way to do that. And um, it doesn't matter what level you're in, uh, you can be at the expert level like today, or you can be at the very beginning, because if you come as a, a, a the very low uh, entry level, you're going to inspire other that don't even have Tableau license yet, or they have a Tableau license and they're very intimidated with the tools. So you can help our community to embrace Tableau from the entry level or you can bring something as um, uh, expert level like today and share with us your uh, your experience so um and thanks again to uh, uh nebraska yeah absolutely a wonderful point it is really about getting to the next level um, in relation to where you are today and maybe that's just installing tableau Maybe it's just getting your first viz in place. And it's it's that's what's really important. Keep on pushing yourself, learning new things, and come uh, continue to join us. Um, and we will have a save the date coming soon. Um, and in the meantime, um, congratulations. Uh, we'll stay on the line. I will I will announce the winner in the LinkedIn chat. I just have to review all the, the responses. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for coming. And hope to see you again next time.